What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Turbo John YouTube channel. It's the first time I've ever said that. I kind of like that ring. <laughs> Just got back from the track. I'm super tired. But today I wanted to talk to y'all a, a little bit about parachutes. And you know, there's a whole bunch of different ones out there. A whole lot of different name brands. I bought one probably, it's been about two or three years ago now. And that was one of the best decisions I ever made for my race car. Yes, I said race car. It's not a street car. I guess there are some street cars that have parachutes. Has yours got a parachute, Ryan? No. Ryan's does not have a parachute yet, so his is still legit street car. Mine's not. His is going to have a parachute and a big monster wing soon. Brian has already made that decision. I don't know if he's happy about that decision or not, but <laughs> he's going to have to get it in the trailer in a hurry, or otherwise it's going to have a wing and a parachute. But anyway, going back to the parachutes. Parachute was probably the best investment I ever made. I used to, I mean, this car, once it got about 135, 140 mile per hour, NHRA, IHRA, they require in the quarter mile, if you run faster than 150 mile per hour, you've got to have a parachute. So we mostly run eighth mile, and I, I've never seen a requirement that says when you go X amount of ET or X amount of speed in the eighth mile, you got to have a parachute. But when I got about 130, 135, 140 mile per hour, it started getting hard to stop the car. And, you know, I got good air, aerospace brakes on the front. It's a disc brake on the back, but it's off of a Thunderbird SVO. But so the, the back, back brakes are not the best, but it started getting hard to stop. And so we put the parachute on. So parachute was probably, it's like a secondary braking system. I mean, it really is. And you can feel it. You throw the parachute first and then you ease onto the brakes. A lot of people say you got to drive into the parachute under full power. I haven't experienced that it makes a difference. I usually try to pull the parachute about 400 foot and it's usually deployed blossomed out real good by you know the finish line and sometimes it goes a little bit past but it depends on the track i mean like t today I, I run 150 mile per hour almost and i had no problem stopping at the track no. if i wouldn't have had a parachute then it could have been problematic and you also got the fear of what happens if you lose your brakes you know if you're standing on the brakes pretty hard and then they go out and you know th that could be a problem especially if you're on a short track so let me show you the parachute that i got and what i did Great investment, lots of different companies out there. Do your homework, but get a parachute on your car if you're going fast. Check this out, I'm gonna show you what I did. Okay, so here's Ryan, he just lied to me. He just told me a fib if I ain't never seen one. Look, what do you see on the back of that? You said this is a street car. This is not a street car, this is a race car. It's got a parachute. Race cars, street cars do not have parachutes. So check out his, the way his is mounted. So this one is a stttsafety.com. Um, I don't know if he's being fast enough to deploy it yet. <laughs> nope. That was pretty good though, wasn't it? So <laughs> you can see his is all, he can just take this thing right off in like two seconds. So this thing, they built this thing awesome. And of course it's got the, the little push bar here. Mine is a similar design, but it's a little different. He, he's got his to where every time he takes it off, he has to unhook this part. This is the part that's welded to the chassis, of course. So that's when this part up here, you know, this, the parachute deploys out, goes back, opens up, and then uh, it's fine. But on mine, I'll show you how mine does. Mine's a little different. This one is probably the most secure with the way it attaches here. But I'll show you what I've got it done on mine. But this thing, uh, you know, it's not a street car, it's a race car. So in here, this thing ain't no street car. He's got his lever down there. And basically, you just pull the lever. You pull the lever, it's got a cable in it. And so the cable simply comes out of this and it, you know, you just got it hanging here. And so when the cable disappears, this thing pops out. Let's see, let's pop it out and see how far it pops. All right, here we go. Boom. <laughs> Did you get that? Did you get it? So now he's gonna repack it and we're gonna do it in slow motion. So this is the problem with the spring, is you have to keep the spring compressed. <laughs> oh, he's pretty good. He's done, done, figured it out a couple of times. Yeah, maybe. So then you thread it through. And this is where when you're in a hurry, it really goes sideways. Let's see if you can. I remember what order you're doing. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter on that. Oh yeah, he's got his under control. My spring's a little bigger than that. And they, some of the, they got some launchers out there that they have like in hand operated like a little ratchet mechanism and it pulls the spring in. 
Oh, this should be good in slow motion. Oh yeah, he's doing good packing the parachute. Yeah, like packing rucksack. Tight. What's up, Brian? What's up? We're doing a video on parachutes. I think we can get it in slow motion. Somehow. I hate those springs. That's why he needs to convert his to air launcher like ours. It's usually like a two-person system with this thing, with the spring. And it's just because you it's, it's trying to expand the whole time. So there we go. Okay, so we're going to pop it again in slow motion. So you can see what happened exactly. He's got this in on the bag here. It's got this, this knot, this tie string is attached. And so it just pulls that out and then what happens is the spring comes out and that's the pilot chute. So the spring comes out, pilot chute, and then that pulls the parachute out of the bag. So that's how this thing pops out. So this is, this, that's how it pops out. This is the guide chute, the pilot chute. This grabs the air. When that grabs the air, it pulls the parachute out of the bag and then you got all your line and that thing deploys. Oh yeah, that's one of the ones that eight, it's got eight. That one's different than mine. But, uh, so that's how the parachute works. I mean, they got different styles and you see his, it just goes right in here. The parachute goes in there first. So some of these, like I was saying, they've got the spring, it's called a launcher. The spring stays in there, but I'm gonna show you how mine is. sounds substantially better than it did the other night. And there ain't a whole puddle of alcohol out here, a gallon. <laughs> so I got a bunch of trash out of the fuel system on that one, so it's good to go now. So like Brian just said, we got bunches of cars that are ready to dance and nowhere to go. We're in our party dresses. Okay, so this is mine. I've got a Stroud. This is a Stroud shoot. It's like a 420, I think it is, was the number 14 or something like that. But this one's a little different. So when I got this parachute, I got my kit for the for the parachute from S and W race cars. And I'll show you that in a minute. But this is the spring. You see Brian Ryan's spring. His was a little short. This one is the Stroud one. I probably deployed this thing probably a half a season or so. And look at this thing. I mean, it springs out, pulls the parachute out same way. The difference is Stroud though, Stroud has got a, they call it a deployment bag. And so it's a bag that the parachute's in. It's a lot easier to actually pack this parachute than like he just done over there in his. Um, getting it in the bag anyway. So this is the pilot chute. So this thing is normally in here and look how big this thing is compared to that. So you have to squash this thing down and you would think that little spring is not very, very strong but as it gets close to compression it really is very strong well, it didn't go as high as i thought it was going to but you can see it definitely i mean it definitely whoa. hey get my camera back right okay <laughs> sorry about that hit my camera knocked it all over the place so this is same thing same type of deal so this comes out through here uh out the back this is hooked to the parachute up here this piece so what happens is this one comes through same things it pulls it out so let me show you what i did so this is the s and w part so mine has a big here mine has a three eighths i think it's uh it's a half inch it's a half inch hole and so I have a pin. This slides into the, the bar in the back of the car. It stubs out and then I put a hitch pin right here. And the hitch pin is like a half inch hitch pin. And then I have to take this thing off each time. So what the s &W part come with, it come as a kit, it come with this, it come with the part that goes on here. And then it come with a, a bar that goes across here. And so I had to fabricate the rest. So it comes with this little butterfly thing here in the back as well. And it's got, an aluminum backing plate with the with the bag here. 
And you can see mine is attached to this piece so I can take it all off at one time. Now this piece here, one of the downfalls, one of the downfalls about this spring is this spring is heavy. So it plows out, it drops on the ground and it wears out very quickly. And you can see it, you can see this is just road rash from it riding on the ground as I'm stopping. Once it gets stopped, it's going on the return road. And of course you're gonna stop on the return road and you know pack the parachute up but this thing gets it gets beat to death so this is an air launcher and this is super hard to pack super hard to pack the spring is super big so this is an air launcher so you can buy kits from jegs and summit and different companies but what i chose to do is i went to granger i think it was and i got this pneumatic cylinder i don't remember the size of it but the key part, the key thing is the distance from here to here and the diameter. So this fits perfect between the back of my car and the back of my car is here and this. So if, if it was out further, I would've got a, lot of, a longer cylinder. And if it would've been a little shorter, I would've got a shorter cylinder. But the, what I'm seeing is the bigger the diameter, the harder it's gonna push out. Something else, and this is a quarter inch line. Something I'm going to do is I'm gonna turn that into a three eighths inch line. Uh, just so it's got more volume. Uh, but this is run off of CO2. I got CO2 in the car anyway because I've got boost controller. So this is the spring and it's super easy to hook up. So really, I mean, this line goes to my CO2 bottle. I've got a, a, a quarter turn valve at the bottle that turns on and off. Now you can buy little kits, you can buy little air release things. But basically what happens is, so this is hooked up. And when this is hooked up, you turn on the pressure. So it pressurizes. There's a lot of people that think that this thing pre only pressurizes when you, when you hit the button or pull the lever. That's not accurate. This is basically a spring. And so it's a, it's a pneumatic spring. So the pressure is here. This thing is trying to come out. And so this is just like Ryan's car. I've got a pin in here, but this is just like the emergency handle. So when this thing has 100 PSI of air pressure on it, when you pull the pin, boop, this thing comes flying out. And so this is the D-bag uh, that I was talking about. They call it D-bags. I'll post a link to it. It's a uh, deployment bag. So there's a couple different ones. So this one is a Stroud. And really the parachute is just tied up in here. So super, super easy. Now the one that come with this, when I got the kit, when it had this pilot chute, it was just a regular bag. It was a normal bag, but you can buy an air launcher bag and look, you'll notice this thing has a chute on it. So this is the, the pilot chute, the bag itself. So in here, all I did to finish this was super simple. This thing already had an aluminum backing plate. So I went and got me a piece of aluminum. It's kind of oval. It's supposed to be circle, but I mean, it works. It didn't matter. So it mounts simply to the backing plate. You can see that and it mounts just above here. And you can see what I did is I moved it down so it is mostly in the center. This was moved up here, but now it's moved down as far as it could go. So this is really close to being in the center. Um, but if it's off a little bit, it's not really that big a deal. You know, it's gonna push the bag out. So that's what happens. So, so this is pressurized, I pull it, and then it goes whoop, and it pops out, this deploys, and this will knock your butt out if you're not careful, if you accidentally are standing down here, which I've almost done a couple of times. So be careful when you when you have that thing pressurized. So this deploys. Shoots out, it deploys, this pops it. I'm going like 190 mile an hour. Not really, I'm going like 150, 155. Air catches this. It fully extends all the way this thing is packed. It deploys. And so it's pulling the, the leader out, the cable, whatever this stuff's called. What is this stuff called? The line. So it pulls it all out and boom, there's the actual parachute. So this is deployed behind the car. I'm trying not to knock myself out. So this is deployed by the, behind the car. At this point, the parachute gets drug out of the bag and the parachute opens and that happens very rapidly. So now that's how the parachute opens. And then, you know, mine, like I said, mine's a little different. Mine's a Stroud. Let's see, there's a, let's see if there's a number on it. Stroud, 1016. So I've had it, wow, I've had it four years. 
uh, model number. Well, that model doesn't tell me the, actually what it is. I think it's a 420. But you do it based on the weight of your car. They have different sizes, different opening, how quickly they open, a whole bunch of diff different factors. That's above my pay grade. So just look at the, the company that you're dealing with. So this is packed out. So now to pack to shoot, super easy. Uh, Stroud has got a lot of videos on that, so I'm not going to go into that aspect of it. But you put this in here, you take your tethers, your lines that come from the parachute, you wrap those around up top in a circle is what I usually do, then you bag it back up. Now when you get back on the car here, like I was saying, this thing is sticking straight out because it's got 100 pounds of CO2 pressure and it's you know holding it out. And so then what I do for mine, my cheap way, is I simply, now I've got the quarter turn valve turned off at the CO2 bottle and I take this loose and it goes and then when it does that, I take this and I push it back in and then I pack the chute back in. So you saw Ryan struggling with holding that spring with his knee and this thing is shot out at me so many times it's not even funny. So that's when I was like, I gotta do something different. And then, you know, I come up with a way to make my own air launcher. So that's it, that's how you make, you can make an air launcher cheap. These solenoids are, are very cheap, they're very inexpensive and it works good. I mean, I've never had this fail. Now, that's not saying it's going to fail on you the first time if you do it incorrectly or if you have a problem. So, I mean, you know, you got to be careful, got to check it, make sure everything works good. But this is an air launcher that I, I, I made. This is one that I made cheap and it works. It works like a champ. All right, guys. Well, that's it. I just wanted to show you all my cheap air launcher on how I did my parachute and uh, talk to you a little bit about, you know, the importance of having a parachute, very important. And probably the most important thing, and this is something I do every time, it really saves on your brakes. If you got a parachute, pull the parachute. You know, it, if it makes a decent pass, if it makes a half track pass, probably not that big deal if you don't pull it. You can stop, you're only going 100 mile an hour. But if you make a decent pass, Pop that dog on parachute just in case you have any problems. You know, it's just it's just a safety thing. Getting in a habit and realizing that part of your in-between round maintenance is packing this parachute. But doing it this way with this air launcher will make it so you can pack it a lot simpler, a lot quicker, with a lot less headache. All right, guys, y'all comment, like, and subscribe. We'll see y'all soon. Go fast and get some wind lights. Thanks.